Okay, so the idea was basically you want to be able to like privatize data on your your IPFS node. Um, so right now, data on IPFS is uh, replicated across nodes. Anyone you connect to, anyone can request it. They receive the node, or sorry, they receive the block. Um, but the idea of like saving private data uh, is currently a challenge. And right now, I think the intended solution is to create like a private network. Uh, where your nodes only talk to nodes that you own or um, using Swarm to then pass uh, sanctioned keys to, excuse me, to all the nodes that you trust. Um, so the idea was to create a configuration in IPFS to accept uh, certain blocks or to pass certain blocks to certain peers when requested, um, basically using it as a filter. So if, if, a peer of yours asked you for a block, but you have, you know, this peer uh, is a, like allowed to see this block, then they get it. Otherwise, they don't get it. And so you're you're able to have this kind of like self-configured set of data that you don't want replicated across nodes. Um, Laurent uh, gracefully put this demo together on a GitHub repo uh, that we could go check out. I think there's uh, there's images to it later. Um, we did a certain number of things before creating the demo. So initially, this was implemented in a JS IPFS repo um, because JS was the easiest thing to hack on at the time. Uh, this was later then discussed, and then uh, we were directed to go put this into a Go BitSwap PR. Uh, so uh, decided where to put that in the BitSwap protocol. Uh, we tried to come up with a method that wasn't um, at not a heavy implementation. So this was something that was lightweight, supposed to be very minor uh, and easily to get PR'd and put through into the system. Uh, didn't have a lot of changes, doesn't affect a lot of other things. Um, and then I think there's a spec uh, recently that is talking about authing uh, IPFS data. Content in IPFS is globally indexed and replicated. So if, if you have something on your node, it's assumed to be public. Um, you could create a private network again, but like you still want to be able to participate in the network without blocking yourself off from the entire public. You know, the same way that I could give access control to my data, uh, we were trying to replicate that uh, minimally. So this is a bunch of uh, previously discussed issues and PRs that have come up um, as well as implementations. Uh, we noticed there was a lot of other people either requesting this or creating implementations for it. Uh, one of the implementations, I think we actually talked to one of the developers of it, but uh, PureGhost has an implementation uh, that changes like the, the bit swap spec uh, and actually has continuous access across, or sorry, continuous access control across nodes. So if you don't want access, um, if, you, if you don't want other nodes to have access to your block, they can still request that block uh, but it has to do something with like a past key. Um, that's a very heavy spec and that's a very heavy change for the protocol, uh, but it's still the same idea, right? Like they still want to be able to have access control for uh, their own data on their node. The great thing is that so far there was no, like no one shared any pull requests to implement this feature. Like a lot of people have been talking about this, wanted this, but we're basically the first one to have a pull request that is this close to get merged. Um, um, to IPFS, so I think this is great. What happened is that right now there is also a move towards implementing this, like creating a new BitSwap specification to implement this, with like the fancy of token, etc. that uh, Kyle was talking about. And so I think like I will, and I think Kyle, Kyle and I will assume like 0.1% responsibility into triggering this new specification and like energizing this discussion around implementing authentication like the headers, basically on privacy and to BitSwap. So this is a very exciting uh, time to be, to, to, to like uh, be part of seeing the specification changes. Um, these are some images to the demo. These first couple images are uh, the actual configuration of the IPFS node uh, to take what we call a peer request filter. Uh, and that peer request filter is basically just a predicate in which returns true or false and it it's given the CID and the peer ID. Uh, you can do with it what you will. You can say whether or not 
that combination of pure ID and CID uh, passes or not. If it does pass, uh, the BitSwap protocol basically sends a don't have, I believe, and then uh, basically acting like your node doesn't have that data, uh, even though it does. This was a very minimal implementation. So things that this doesn't do. Um, if the node replicates that data, right, somehow uh, your predicate is messed up or something, or a peer got to it before and you didn't want them to, um, it's kind of too bad. Uh, it's, it's now on a public network. Um, so this really only solves the idea that the information on your node while it's on your node is yours. Uh, if it gets out, it gets out. It's public. Yep. Also making the feature official. So there's that Go IPFS and the Go BitSwap uh, PR. Uh, we have the implementation in JS IPFS. I think it might need to be altered a little bit uh, based on what we did to the Go IPFS or sorry, the Go BitSwap uh, protocol. Uh, <laughs> Rust, uh, if it ever gets there. And then uh, also like just there's a lot of other conversations around like how this should be implemented. Are there different things that we can do, possibly building on top of that make this a little more solid of a feature? Um, so anything like authentication headers, um, something something along the lines of what Pyrgos implemented with the keys being passed and forth with blocks, um, or a general content policy uh, that gateway operators can subscribe to. So basically, if like someone else has a content policy uh, that you want to align with, say, you know, maybe it gets rid of all the, the bad images on the internet or something, uh, then you can basically say like, okay, I don't want this list of CIDs and I never want to share this list of CIDs with other people. Better build tools around something like this. So one of the things we thought of was like basically a configuration for setting this up with the CLI rather than having to actually like create your node and build your node first. So things to make this more usable. I mean, if you can restrict, uh, it was just a way to get a, unconditional uh, security uh, information security security somewhere i mean if you can restrict uh, access to data on ipfs um, then you can start building like decentralized and conditionally secure uh, system which are which are like fancier uh, way to protect uh, protect data but uh, yeah